It's cool to me. It is, uh, by the time you see this, is Tuesday, and you know what that means. Um, welcome to a special Indie Force podcast. Um, One intro- which we were hoping never to have to do. No. 100%. It's one of those shows that you want to forget, but at the same time want to remember because of just how... Masterfully crafted, this episode was like oh, yeah. holy hell. And trust me, we'll get this. Probably one of, yeah. Yeah, this is probably one of AEW's best episodes to date of 2020. It, it is the best episode of 2020 of any yeah. wrestling television show. And now, that's for those of really you, sad to say, by yeah. the way. Now, for, the, for those of you who are lacking context, uh, it is about a week ago by the time you see this. Uh, Professional wrestler John Huber, known to fans the world over as Brody Lee, passed away of a non-COVID-19 related lung issue, according to his wife Amanda. Or at least I believe that's his wife. Yes, that is his wife Amanda. Um, so, obviously, uh, this is just all hitting us still. I like, I'm, I'm still... I, I've accepted that it's real, but it took me a while. Um, and I think when I did accept it at first, it was angry. Like, I was angered. Um, a lot of people kind of give their recounting on events like this, so I'll kind of give mine. And in um, uh, in retrospective, I'll, um, it, it, by proxy, I'm going to give Nikos and Mike's um kind of telling and they can tell their story afterwards um everybody knows this year has been absolutely awful 
uh, and this was... 2020, that is, because yeah. we're recording yeah. this. Yeah, 2021. Last year, year, I should say, uh, was so fucking god-awful Garden. from every conceivable angle. And jo- as John Moxley said, this was just like a pride-style soccer kick right to the face, losing John Uber. Um, I was on a call with Nikos and, and, and Mike because I was just it took so much out of me now to give context right um, I just graduated really and instead of you would think I'd be excited for that he literally he, would, he literally just finished college like two weeks prior and you'd think I'd be excited like I found out I passed all my classes and I'm going to graduate and get my diploma in the mail and uh, well, diploma. I should say bachelor's degree. Um, yeah, yeah. Now, e- now, even with the same thing. now, even with COVID and the world and the shit show it is, graduating college is still a massive achievement, and you have every right to be proud of yourself for that. Right. But, but here's what ended up happening instead. Um, and hindsight, looking at this now, is kind of selfish. Um, I don't know. I felt anxious more than proud. If that makes sense, because it's like, where do I go from here? Um, Because there was a part of me that felt like... Well, I can kind of answer that question. You start pounding the pavement looking for paying jobs. Right. Obviously. I know that. I know that, but I just... Here was my thought process. Um, And I think a lot of it had to do with the shitty fucking year that has been 2020. Um, or that was 2020, is so much kind of hindered my success outside of school, and, like, so much got in the way, and Nikos knows this because I told him, and... Yeah. Not to mention, don't you and, didn't you and him go to the same college? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, James and I went to the same university. Uh, I happened to graduate before James did. But and before people click off the video, I I swear this is gonna relate back to John Huber. I promise. So bear with me here. Um, we'll, we'll get we'll get there. Just, we'll warm up to yeah. it. Just hang on. So, I'm I'm talking to Nikos about this and how I'm just so mentally tapped and upset and drained creatively. I'm depressed. I, w- I legitimately was at the lowest point I think I've ever been in my life was towards the end of this year. And I kid you not, and Nikos, will be th- and, Nikos and Mike will be the first to tell you, WYW and, and FTW Productions as a whole was never this close to being finished. Now, let me be clear, it's not. Um, that's in the past, and I'll explain why. But that was my thought process now I'm talking about this to Mike and Nikos and then all of a sudden I get a buzz from my phone and it's Johnny Starr and he says yo and I'm like oh he must need something then he writes Brody Lee died and I'm like this is my first thought because, and this is no in any way disrespectful to Johnny, by the way. He's, I love the kid, but like he'll play sick ju- practical jokes sometimes. So that was my first go-to thought. This has to be a joke, and then he sent me the article, and then he sent me the official statement, and then I and checked then Twitter, I, and then, and then I, you, and, and then, then you I came said, in right after, yeah. And yeah. Well, uh, oh, here's. I'm sorry, kids. No, on. no. I already said what I was going to say. Go on, Nico. So, how I found out about this was, Casey, you sent the image to the group chat. Yeah, I first found that out. That was the first one. Yeah, I first, I first found out about it from uh, Noah Foster's chat, Team NJPW. Yeah. yeah. I saw the image, which was a full-on obituary, and I'm sitting there going, no. Yeah. I no, like, no, just, just no constant fun. no. Yeah. Meanwhile, Mike and James were like, what's going on? And I'm just sitting here, like, not giving a response. I'm just keep saying no. 
I originally didn't bring it up in the call because I, I thought it was I thought Johnny was trolling. I I legitimately did. I like I couldn't believe it. Like I when I actually got on the team NJPW chat and then I looked at every fucking news article is breaking the story and I'm like, oh my god. Like What the fuck? It was just it was just terrible to hear about this news because dude, we were we were we and he were was on the most him. dude he was like on the most meteoric rise of his life dude he just had the match of his life against Cody like two months prior One of and the he best. signed on like four months three months prior dude he was such a main event caliber star when he showed up and he was like on the high of a lifetime and. Like, and James, you and I literally talked about setting up an idea of what happened if Brody Lee would return. I had the idea of what if Brody, uh, Brody Lee challenges Brian Cage for the FTW championship or maybe fights Darby for the TNT championship. Yeah, I remember this. Like, and now it's like never... Mike, all of us in the call were, like, fucking shocked. Um, now, I was nearly on the verge of tears just looking at the obituary. Dude, I was hit too hard to cry. It was, um... If that makes any sense whatsoever. But no, it makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. 100% it makes sense. Um, so, imagine what's going through their heads and then my head as well and then you get slapped with that right across the fucking face like I didn't want to believe it I my sleeping pattern has been fucked because of it like I couldn't sleep that night I was like this has to be a joke this has to be some storyline I wanted to believe that um if it was a storyline, honestly, I feel like it would be in such bad taste. Yeah, obviously. Um, so like, there's no way Tony really, Khan would approve of this thing yeah, as a yeah, storyline. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So it's just like, fuck. This I mean, Vince real. McMahon would, but never Tony Khan. Right. So I was like, fuck, this is real. And I think it hit me, I think, on Sunday night. And I think I just... Um, I listened to Solomon's podcast... And just him getting choked up, reading Bray Wyatt's statement, I think, uh, destroyed me. Like, I, I don't have it up right now, but I could probably, I, I could probably find it. But it's, it's not for the faint of heart. He basically, he, uh, he said, this isn't how it was supposed to be. I'm so fucking pissed. It was supposed to be us useless at 70 years old running Wyatt family spots at high school gymnasiums. And I'm like, oh, fuck, you're breaking my heart, dude. You're breaking my heart, Bray. And I was just like, I felt so Those bad. tweets... Those tweets from the WWE roster gave more of a tribute yeah, than yeah. was shown on Monday's episode. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's the case. I don't even know what they're doing on SmackDown. Um, not that it matters now, because the tribute was properly done on a different show. So, like, it doesn't matter which show. As we knew as long it as, would be the case. As long as he got his proper tribute, I don't give a fuck what show it was on. But um, I'll get to that. So, I dealt with that. It hit me so hard. I was fucking furious. I was like... You're fucking kidding me. And then I'm hearing story after story after fucking story. And it's basically like we went through another Owen Hart. Uh, something Or another me. Eddie Guerrero. No, it, 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 even Eddie Guerrero, like, yes, he was beloved. And everyone was crushed when he was gone, but... Um, it was one of those, it, but but given people, his past, people get, yeah, it was people one, guessing, it was yeah. one of those things. Yeah, it was one of those things you kind of saw coming. Owen Hart 
completely out of fucking It was fucking a blindside. No one yeah. expected that. No one. No one expected that, and... Completely out of left field. That it was like that. Brody had... He looked like he was in the best shape of his fucking life two months ago. And and, and just and by just about all accounts that I could find, he was. Yeah, there was... It's like... He had a lung issue that... I think happened which, within the match. Which, again, which, which, again, not related to COVID. Yeah, I think, I think, and this is what I think, by the way. This is not, and this is nobody on the AEW, by the way. I want to I make that clear now. I, I think if you look at the match, there is a spot where I think it, I think that's where it started. And that's where he takes that horrific um, apron bump from the top of the turnbuckle, where he gets, like, just yanked by the neck. And, yeah. And, you know, obviously he jumped, but he still he is landing smack dab. Like, um, I forget, like, where he landed, but it was, like, somewhere, um, like, on his side. And it, he said, like, not even too long after that, I think on the AEW Unrestricted Podcast, he barely could... Uh, he barely could get. He he went through twenty minutes on his uh his bike and he could barely do it. He had to stop after twenty minutes, which I, apparently he hadn't done in at all in his career. So it was just like that. I think that may have what did it. Obviously, him recommending and taking that spot. If I were to deduce what happened. I'm not a doctor, so um, but I've seen enough spots where it looks like, like we gotta remember, these people are not immortal here. Like, they're they're more, they're human beings, like we're they're, they're all, flesh and blood, like all of us we're all gonna die. Yeah. You know, at some point. And these guys put their lives on the line, like for us. Yeah, for us every night. Um, now, again, it's just like, I was so fucking pissed, because I'm reading story after story, and, and it's breaking my heart, because apparently, for all intents and purposes, family dude would give everything to his fucking kids if he could. Everything. Like, for fuck just him as a wrestler, like, he was the best dad that apparently you could ever meet. And everybody from both, from from WWE to AEW to Ring of Honor, Impact, everybody has confirmed this to be the case. Like, he loved his fucking kids. He loved his wife. Like. And he had a young family. Really yeah. freaking young family. Wife's barely in her, wife's probably barely in her 30s. Kids aren't even in double digits yet. Dude, she's pregnant. She's pregnant with another kid on the way. Child is gonna grow up without a father. Yeah, dude. I mean, I don't know if he'll grow up without a father figure, and we'll get to why I think that in a minute, but yeah, I mean, it's not his father. He's, he's not gonna see his dad. And the other well, kids lost her well, dad. Yeah, well, we can we can at least say this. Even if he won't get to 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 see his dad, at least in person, right. his his family and the people who knew him will make absolutely sure that this newborn child knows exactly what kind of man their father his father was. Oh yeah, and that's a shame, man. Um, but yeah, for. I was so angry, man. Like, it was such a slog, dude, getting through Monday and Tuesday. Like, I was still having those thoughts, too, of, like, self-doubt. And hearing John's death did not help at all. And then, um, it got so bad to the point where, um, you know, we, we were going to a pizza joint. And, yeah, I'm exposing myself. Fuck it. Um... Granted, I was waiting an hour and a half for, like, a double pepperoni pizza, but, um, 
instead of just letting it go, I, I fucking snapped. At that point, I just fucking lost my mind. Um, not even at the person in front, by the way, um, because I know it wasn't her fault. It was more, it was the cook's fault, but I still shouldn't have lost my mind the way I did. I think it was just everything with how I've been feeling and then the, you know, John Huber passing on top of it that I just fucking, I, and then 2020 as a whole, I just, I finally lost it. I mean, I absolutely lost it. I cursed him out in front of everybody in the fucking place and told him thanks for nothing, dickhead, and walked. And I kept sh just launching at my fury then at my dad, who, as it, you guys know how I get, it's never fucking fun. I know it's never fun. Y'all hate it. I hate it, too. Um, I don't know what it fucking solves. Um, and I was just like, lowest of the fucking lows. And then Wednesday happened. And... You know what that means. Um, for the first time, if, if, if for nothing else, John actually gave the world hope in a way after he left. 50% capacity. First time since... March that they had a house pa as packed as they did. And they came for Brody. And what followed after seeing, hearing the crowd, I could tell it was a legit crowd, and seeing that image that you're seeing right now with everybody on the stage was the best tribute show for a pro wrestler that I've ever seen in my entire life. And I lived through Eddie. Like, this is leaps and bounds better than that, and I think it's even leaps and bounds better than the Owen one. Like, this was so... As sad as it was, it was so fucking beautiful, man. Um, one of the greatest... Uh... Wrestling shows of 2020, as sad as it is, the life that they celebrated was the the man John Huber, Luke Harper, Brody Lee, um, whatever the hell you want to call him, just incredible tribute, dude. Like I, I will, I will basically give a rundown of what the show had, the crowd. Pa a pretty much a packed crowd for 50% capacity. Loud as hell. For everything. Literally everything. I've never heard a crowd this loud for a tribute in my life. Never in my life. And amidst living in a... Still living in a pandemic where oh, there's yeah. like a 50% crowd. Yeah, you can tell AW fans are dedicated. Oh yeah, 100%. And the... They will not let some... Petty virus keep them locked in their homes. Not, not, not. When this is too important for some virus, I don't even care. I, I'd sue me if you if you think otherwise. I don't care. This was too important to miss. I wish I could have fucking been there. I would have been right there with that as I would have found a way to get a fucking plane ticket and and been there. Um. <clears throat> <clears throat> <laughs> I fucking cried it. <laughs> Drool run down my pipe. Fucking, that's probably Brody Lee. Fucking speaking oh. to me right now. You crying little bitch. <laughs> crying I ain't gonna take bitch. you into the dark order. I ain't. I don't take no little pussies in the dark order. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Except he does. I mean, what? No, I'm kidding. I love, I love <laughs> these guys. I love these guys. I, 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 I kid. I just. I swear. Don't, don't hate me. Um, they're gonna come after your ass now. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'll be fucking honored. They're fucking. They're gonna throw papers at you. Good. Just a mountain of papers. I'll be honored, bro. I'll be honored. I'll be honored. Um. So. 
the first uh, thing that you see is a emotional John Moxley, and he's literally has a hat covering his eyes just to show, like, dude, one of the toughest fucking dudes in the business. Like, I, I'm. You can tell he's trying to just keep a straight face the whole time, but he's broken. Keep in mind, like, even before Double or Nothing, like, this man and and him were part of the best six-man tag team match of all time in 2014 at Elimination Chamber. One of the greatest... It, 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 no, fuck that. It's the greatest six-man tag match you will ever see. They were... Shield of family. They were there for that. That was an incredible man. I, I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna end up going back to watch that. Like, yeah, same, same. I, I actually am yeah. thinking of doing a retro for that. Honestly, I'm, I'm doing a whole. But let's not. You know what? You know what? Not not to derail subject here. Let's not even do. Let's not even give that show the honor of a full retro. Let's just do a watch along of that one match. I agree. You know what? We should do a watch along of his. Um. We should do a watch along of his four best matches of that year. Um, mm. That six man six man tag is obviously last. That's the main event. Um, yeah. Wasn't Shield? But was wasn't uh, Wyatt family was this Evolution also a thing? Or am I it, no, Shield? no, you're thinking of the Shield. But um, I okay. tell you what is a thing, and and you're not you're not too far off. Wyatt family versus the Usos, fucking tremendous. 2014. Now that would have um, been. Now, now that would have been Luke Harper and uh, Eric, Eric Rowan. Rowan yes. For yes. Okay. Um, and then the Survivor Series match that he was a part of in 2014, the best five-on-five -five Survivor Series match in company history. And, and not just because that's the year Sting made his debut. Yeah, exactly. It was just really, really. That good. was actually the first. That was actually the first Survivor Series match I saw live. Not to take away from John Huber, but. What an outing that night by Dawson. Well, that and then it went to the month following. One of the, the last, it, it is honestly the last great Intercontinental Championship match in history. Luke Harper, Dolph Ziggler ladder match. Fucking they destroyed yeah. each other. Destroyed. And they did so well at telling a story too, which gets lost in the destruction. But they really clawed and scratched for that belt. Like, they made it look like a fucking fight, dude. It was such a great fucking ladder match. Um, I say we do those four. If we're gonna do a watch along of Brody Lee's best. And then we should add some AEW on top of that, I think, too. Agreed. Um, okay. I would I would say... I would say, uh... Dog Collar. Dog Collar's gotta be one of them and the match with Moxley. Did did, I was going to say, did Brody Lee ever fight Moxley? Yeah, uh, double or nothing. Okay. Yes, he did. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the one I was thinking I was... Okay, yep, yep. yep. Absolutely down for that one. It was, an, it was a hell why, of a that's match. That's why I brought up you the talk, shield. You talk, about, you, talk, mm. you, talk about a mas you talk about a master class in making a heel look dominant without... Making your heel look amazing without actually giving him the belt. There it is, my dude. Yeah, well, not just that, but... Like, Brody made himself look great. Oh, he feet. did absolutely. He really did like that. That put him over so huge. Yeah, because he because he did the one thing nobody expected him to do against Moxley. He survived. Mm. Um, it's a great story, honestly. It really is. It's amazing. But, um, uh, yeah, just Moxley basically telling him, saying like. This year, 2020 has been shit, but losing John Huber is like a, as John would say, was like a sucker, a pride sucker kick straight to the fucking dome piece. I couldn't have worded it any better myself. I don't know. Dude. I don't know why I still find that term so funny. Yeah, uh, because Brody, Lee came, hey, Brody Lee came up with that actually. Apparently, according to wait, the seriously? Yeah, dome piece. He came up with that. He didn't come up with dome piece. Uh, uh, he came up with the phrase soccer ball style kick right to the face. I just changed it to okay. dome piece, I think. But um, Moxley then said, I love you, and I'm going to miss you. And then the first match, uh, and I'm like, okay, we got the waterworks out of the way, right? I'm thinking, all right, 
here we go. Let's do this. And then, you know, it started like any other dynamite, you would think. Like the Hardy part, uh, Hardy Party's coming out. Uh, Isaiah Cassidy, Mark Quinn, and my Hardy. And then the Young Bucks come out and they have the tribute, uh, Brody Lee tribute t shirts. And then Cole Cabana came out and he was. His face, his eyes were so red, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And it it yeah, breaks you your heart, tell. dude. You, it breaks your heart when you find out. By the way, he was bawling his eyes out all day before that fucking match. Are you shocked? I'm not, but it's just, all right then. I I it's just hard. I was expecting. I was expecting Silver to ball in the. In fact. Didn't John did. Silver have, on record didn't John Silver have a fucking them. sign? No, I'll get to that case. I got you. No, 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 no. We'll yeah. get to that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Hold on to that thought. Um, and, yeah, he won with the Superman pin. Obviously, like, obviously this was going to be a Dark Order clean sweep, as it should. Um... Yeah, it, the entire was, night. Yeah, it's the entire night, which is great, by the way. It was just tremendous. And he... Oh, and what's respectable is they held off all storyline events just for this night, which is appropriate. Agreed. They, and actually, I, I disagree. I think they furthered storylines in the midst of all of this, too. Which is... And they did it in such a tasteful way. Like I'll, I'll get to that. Wait, but, wait, you're wait, you're right. Yep, yep, we'll get to that. We'll we'll get but, to that. But um, that works. but yeah, no, it was just like tremendous because like, you know, the Dark Order was kind of accepted and it was just a kind of a last minute addition. But it was like, um, you know, and Colt Cabana just was in fucking tears, dude. Like absolutely in tears. And then, And then out come here. Here's one of the best. Here's where you knew where this night was going to be about. The acclaimed came out. Uh, Max Caster and uh, I forget the other guy's name. I I was about to say Deontay Wilder for a second, uh, but no, I don't I don't know his name off the top of my head. But um, call him Hype Man number forty five or something. Sure, something like that. There's so many hype men in AEW. It's ridiculous. But um, yeah. They're coming out, and they're about to talk trash about the Dark Order, and then out come SCU, and they just clean their clock. Young Bucks hit super kicks after they bring him into the ring, and then they gave Colt Cabana the spot with the double bionic elbow, which is crazy to think, too. Like, um, that's oh, always been a tribute Dusty, to Dusty. Dusty, Dusty Rhodes in his prime versus Prody Lee in his. Oh, uh, would that. Tremendous, that tremendous, absolutely tremendous. That would have been a match and a half. That can happen in heaven. Yep, well, and it is. I guarantee. Especially if, especially if Terry Funk's description is anything to go by, that is absolutely a match that's going on in heaven right now. Hmm. Um, yeah, and then Cole Cabana is just in tears. Uh, he goes to the back. Darby Allen with no face paint comes on and. He talked about, and this was kind of the theme of the night, which is a mind fuck in and of itself, because he never goes anywhere without that paint. It was, it was, it was refreshing, I will say, for this. He basically said, "The minute I heard that Brody Lee was going to get to AEW, I couldn't wait to wrestle him. I told Sammy Guevara that that's the guy I want to wrestle." And I learned really quickly. And that honestly, that was going to be like one of the greatest. Title defenses that would have been Darby such a great ever. David Goliath bout, dude. Would have been so good. And like hearing, hearing Darby talk about how he wished he wanted to fight Brody Lee. I don't know why it reminded me of what Punk said on the day Benoit died, mm. where he's like he wished that he could have fought Benoit. Right. So it kind of felt like the similar vibe that's going on, and I feel like if if Brody, if he had come back to AEW, I feel like that's where the story picked up, where he would just immediately go for the TNT Championship. Because now looking back, why would he need the FTW Championship if 
but he's still not going to recognize yeah, him. Yeah, no, you're right. Sense. No, it was Brian Gage is usually like the kind of a placeholder for Brody in a way. Yeah. I mean, it's not shocked. The two respect each other a lot anyway, but... Um, yeah, it was just like... When he said that, and then he said, I learned really quickly that he wasn't here for himself. He was here to put other people over, and that's the kind of man that Brody was. That's the kind of man that Heber was. He was just a selfless guy. He came here to get everybody that he could over. He and, 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 you, and, you know, and you know why? You know why he did that? It's not just because he wanted everybody else to make money. It's because he understands the age-old philosophy of a high tide raises all boats. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Indeed. Um, and then after that, we had the next tribute match, which was... Evil Uno and Stu Grayson, the original Dark Order, along with Lance Archer in Brody Lee gear. Why is Lance Archer not in the Dark Order? Yeah, I, I said the same thing. That's, that's my thoughts, exactly. Yeah, he looked, He's he a looked perfect like fit he, for Dark Order. He, yeah, I agree. Yeah, especially with Jake the Snake Roberts in his ear? Yeah. What more do you need? I said the same thing. That's your, that if, if they do replace him, which I don't think they should. Should at this point, but if they ever, but if, if they're they going, but if they're going to, but if they're going to, it absolutely yeah, should bingo, be with Lance bingo. and Jake. Yeah, bingo. Actually, you're wrong. If they're going to replace Brody Lee, I have the perfect idea who they're going to pr- replace him with. Go on. I will say it later. Just have to think about it. Does that make a, a lot of sense down the road? Oh, I know what he was about to say too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's not to say, by the way, you can't have Lance Archer in it, but anyway. Um, if you wanted to, you could have had Butcher and Blade in Dark Order. We'll, we'll talk about that. Anyway. Um, we'll get there. Yeah. Six-man tag of Archer and Dark Order, the OG Dark Order, versus uh, the Butcher, the Blade, and Eddie uh- Kingston. And... One of the things that broke me was poor Eddie Kingston had to be the dickhead heel, and it's one of those rare times he really didn't want to be, but a consummate professional, he said, Brody! Tears in his eyes. I love you. I'm going to miss you, and I'll never forget you. This one's for you. But now, but enough of that. Now that all the niceness is out of the way, the Dark Order is nothing without him. And we're going to prove that tonight, you cowards. And he got his ass handed to him promptly after. Absolutely. And that's really the thing tonight. What a pro, Eddie Kingston. My God. He got his ass kicked. Great here. By the first boot by Evil Uno on on Eddie Kingston. He was getting his ass handed to him. I never expected Evil Uno to move that fast now compared to when we saw him when he first right, debuted. Dude, right, right. He's improved. He has improved by leaps and bounds, dude. So uh, I will say, first uh, if Seth Rollins offered anything, it was CrossFit training because he instilled it onto Brody Lee, and I think Brody Lee instilled it to Evil Uno, and it fucking shows, by the way. And and fucking uh, yeah, uh, Butcher too, for that matter, is getting really lean. If you notice. They're both looking in great shape. Um, I will say one spot, which was fucking incredible. Lance Archer does an old school balancing on the rope perfectly into a fucking moonsault, dude. I've never seen anything like this in my life. One of the greatest spots I've ever seen, and, and it was just like, you didn't expect it. Motherfucker, what? Yeah, I'm not kidding. Nikos can confirm this. Ha- this did happen. And um, yeah, the the end it's is mind boggling. Yeah, and then obviously Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, they got the pin with the fatality, and then they started beating up Kingston some more because of course. Um, yeah. And then 
they all hit a clothesline in honor of Brody. A regular clothesline. And then, out of fucking nowhere, Jake the fucking snake, the inventor of the move, hits Gets in his there and short hits the arm. Hit, no, even better. Hits his classic old school sh- uh, short arm clothesline lariat. And people went fucking ape shit when he hit this, by the way. That crowd was already going nuts, and that just sent them over the top. And then, obviously, everybody's posing on the turnbuckles, and Archer is literally crying, saying, Brody, I love you, and I'm going to miss you, dude. I'm going to miss you so much. Into the turnbuckle camera. It was so beautiful. And then, here come the waterworks with the first tribute package. There were two on the show. This was the first. Arn Anderson gave the thoughts about how Brody Lee would always come to the shows, and obviously he's talking about WWE, and how him and Brody Jr. and Amanda were all laughing and smiling, and the show hadn't even started, is what his exact words were. And, uh, you know, Dax Harwood saying, like, you don't meet a lot of people in this business that will literally sacrifice a, pay- a paycheck just to spend time with their family. Brody Lee was that kind of guy. And he put family above everything. Everything else. If wrestling, that, does, if that is, alone. Yeah, go ahead, Kate. If, if that alone does not tell you what kind of man John Huber was, I, I don't know what I'm going to do for you. And um, the worst moment of the whole thing was Bryce, Bryce Remsburg, the AEW ref, bawling as he's trying to keep it together. He, he just he can't do it. And he's recounting a, a recent convo that he had and how much it fucking touched him in hindsight. And, like, he's, in, he's crying buckets, dude. Like, he's basically saying... We'd always talk on the road, you know, like when, as um, as wrestling, as talent often does. But instead of talking about wrestling, we would talk about our kids. And uh, talk about life. They would talk about life and their their wives and their kids. And he said that if there was a Mount Rushmore of wrestling dads, Brody Lee's at. But, the f- centerpiece. Yeah. And then, uh, you think you couldn't get any worse uh, as far as emotion sad, and sadness goes. And then the next match. God, James, James is going to freaking cry just talking about this. Yeah, no, yeah. this was so... And nor do I blame him. This is the match. If you don't watch anything else from this showcase, this is the match you have to see. I, I kid you not. Um, it is the Dark Order. Um, the Dark Order is John Silver and Alex Reynolds, four and five. Um, and Adam Page, who, by the way, did a great gesture. Page pointed to the sky as the fireworks went off. And he's with the two guys that have been trying to recruit him the most, which was a really good storyline touch, but you could also tell it was just really fucking real. Because Adam Page at has been point, having a Hangman, ball with these guys, dude. Hangman, at this point, just join. I don't think he should fully join, but he absolutely should be an honorary member, because I think they should turn face anyway after this. Like, like. Oh, they have to turn face after this now? Yeah. No, no question. Versus, and they had the perfect heel foil, by the way. Proud and powerful in MJF, specifically with MJF. And I'm about to probably lose it, but I'm going to try to keep it as, uh, together as best as I possibly can. I'm hoping I can. Um, the match goes on. Reynolds is taking a lot of the heat. I believe Paige did as well for a majority as the match is progressing, MJF uh, goes over to Brody Lee Jr., who, by the way, on this show was wearing a Dark Order mask and 
was officially a Dark Order member and was called Negative One. And that's in reference to he always put his kids before himself. Which... It's Negatives ass. come before positives. Yeah, but I, I, get, I got the gesture when they explained it, so I didn't care. Who, who, fuck math, who cares? Um, math, math is weird anyway. Yeah, so... The president call him zero, because isn't... No, Brody Zero Lee's still technically, a number. Bro, uh, technically, Brody Lee zero, and Evil Uno's one. So that's why I guess he was negative one. There was no uh, way they can do it, which makes sense in hindsight. Um, yeah, because they're going by. I was never good at math, so I'm sorry. I think the I think the <laughs> idea instead of I think the idea instead of it being Brody first, it's in that order. It's actually Brody's son first. That's that's the whole meaning behind that name, negative yeah. one. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so MJF goes up and he flips the kid off, and immediately I'm like, "Oh boy!" I was scared for a minute. But what was ha- what, what he was gonna let him do was just so beautiful. And anyway, it's all building to this hot tag for John Silver, and John Silver pre- just proceeds to do this Cesaro-like comeback fucking in, insane by the way dude cesaro wishes he could do a comeback like dude, this dude it was it was it was actually <laughs> better cesaro cesaro was actually jealous i think he was on fire dude he he went ape fucking shit dude on on uh on yeah, as he this. had every right to do yeah 100 percent. and by the way he was wearing uh brody lee's uh attire in his size by the way in in uh, honor of John, I guess he get. I guess he gave it to him on being the. Yeah. Elite. And um, even though it looked small on him, I, I I thought that was such an awesome touch. And then, oh boy, what is about to happen is probably the most emotional fucking moments in pro wrestling history you will ever see in your life. Wardlow is running interference as proud and powerful, and MJF is distracting them. Who, by the way, MJF and and uh, uh, Santana recently lost their loved ones. Uh, so prayers to them as well. So this was like a week did they? before that. Yeah. Yeah, did it? I know that. I know Santana uh, did. It might be. It might Santana be. Fa- I don't think it's fake with MJF. I think they confirmed it is real. Believe it or not. He wasn't faking that. I don't know. Sometimes I can't really trust that dude because yeah, well, he sells I, it so fucking well. He does. He does. Anyway, we'll get to that later. But um. So, MJS flipping off this kid, right? Like, being a dick. And then he rips his mask off, showing his face. And like a pro, by the way, the kid is covering his face. Because everybody knows what happens when your mask gets ripped off. Right? Yeah. That that, that kid is a born talent. He, yeah. He's going to be something Dude, uh, dude I can't wait for 10 years, dude. I can't wait. Anyway, he's covering his yeah. face. And then MJF is talking nonsense, and then he flips off the crowd that's booing him. And as he turns his head away, negative one hits a kendo stick shot flush on MJF's face. Um. Nope. No, no, Siobhan no, even no, no, says no, no, he no. want he loves that replay. Bro, I will tell you right now. I don't give a fuck what anyone wants to tell me. The man behind the character MJF is the salt of the fucking earth. For real. That is such an amazing moment, man. Like, he didn't need to give him that, man. He really didn't, and he was so happy when he did it, man. That was such a fucking beautiful moment. I was laughing and crying. And then, as they're trying to run interference with Lord Low as if the waterworks could be any fucking worse. Out comes fucking Eric Rowan to run interference and run him off. Eric Eric Redbeard, Redbeard comes out and he runs off Ward Low and Jericho sold this so well too and uh, fucking tremendous. And then uh, to cap it off Fucking John Silver does the fucking discus, and 
just falls to the fucking ground after making the pin and is just sobbing. Absolutely fucking sobbing. And then out comes Rowan, who was even worse, sobbing. And Reynolds and Paige are crying. Fucking. And then Redbeard has a sign that says, Goodbye for now, my brother. See, see you, you down the road. See you down the road. Down the road. Just. <laughs> One of the best it is the best tribute match for anybody ever this was done so perfect and everyone should fucking be clapping and and patting themselves on the back given the circumstances this was so good this is so good dude it's also a perfect way and how to recruit another wrestler into AEW oh my god I can see it now. Ten years down the yeah, line. Yeah, for those of you, MJF for those has of you, the TNT title, and here comes Brody Lee Jr. with the fucking OG design, undisputed TNT title match, man. Ten years. Let's hope it lasts ten years, man. I want to see it. Yeah, right. Fucking hell. Such a beautiful moment, dude. That was so good. And and the kid, even though everyone was crying, he was trying to be strong, but he was genuinely smiling. He he had a blast. Dude, he got to hit a fucking heel in the head with a kendo stick, dude. What more can you ask dude, for? what a fucking G. What? One of the most hated heels what? in the company, possibly in the whole wrestling what I would, you get the Dude, what I would not have given to be in that kid's shoes. Dude. And I love MJF as a heel. Dude, MJF is so fucking good. And I, I, I'm not trying to just make this about MJF, but I really do mean that. Like, he's such an awesome human being for giving that kid that moment. He really is. He didn't have to do that. And it was just so nice that he did that. It really is. And I know people get offended as as they should. He's probably laughing in your face for getting offended, honest to God. But he probably was really proud of himself, and he was probably really happy for that fucking kid behind the scenes, and as he should. MJF, if you're watching this after you're done, no, I fucking love you for this. I really do. You're the MVP. You're, you're one of the unsung heroes of the Soul Show, dude. Thank you for that. You made that kid. He night. probably knows it though, on camera. Oh, he has and they to. They say like, no, oh, I didn't no do doubt. Shit, but no doubt. He absolutely. When it's know. off camera, you know he loved it. He loved yeah, doing yeah. that. Being a heel is all he's ever wanted to do. And, yeah. th- and, and think he's about very, it. very good at it. I think about it too. He said. When he was a kid on the Rosie O'Donnell show, he was going to be a pro wrestler. Think of how meta that is, dude. Re- legitimately, think about that. And, uh, anyway. Then, uh, Eddie Kingston finally was able to pay tribute proper in a vignette backstage. And he said, I'm going to miss your condescending sarcasm. It's kind of similar to what Bray Wyatt said. I don't think it was exactly that. I'm going to appreciate you for believing in me when I didn't believe in myself. But you're not dead, Brody. And I want your kids to listen to this. As long as you live by what your father taught you, he will never die. There are two times where people die. It's when they go away and when they're forgotten about. And therefore, your father will never die. It is the the highlight of that tribute was he basically said that Brody did his damnedest, not as a wrestler, but as a man and as a father, in which case he quotes, not a lot of men do that. It just goes to show just how genuine and loving John Huber was to his yeah. family, no matter how hard the circumstances was of 2020. 
he was always there. I'm sure he was, man. It is um, said to it is said that to live on in the hearts and minds of the ones who we leave behind is to conquer death. Yeah. Ron Huber has absolutely conquered death. Yeah. And then Anna Jay and Ty Conti who were emotional wrecks. And rightly so. Oh, yeah. Um especially Anna Jay, apparently, um backstage story which they've done a lot on the show as they should have was personally recruited for the Dark Order when they did those tapings in uh, in Atlanta by by John Huber yep and he named her after uh, the reason why she's 99 because everybody didn't know why was named after Wayne Gretzky because he the loved hockey goat. yeah the fuck I'm not shocked. <laughs> son of a bitch, John Huber. And, um... They fought Penelope Ford and Dr. Britt Baker. And, uh, by the way, Britt Baker also paid tribute to Brody Lee by having, uh, purple makeup. Um, in Dark Order colors. Good, good honor. Mm. Same thing with, uh, Penelope yeah. Ford. I think she had one of her old, uh, uh, pink gears in representation for it as well. Um, Anna J made a fucking awesome comeback. It was they bi- the same match as the silver match, just a little less emotion, but she still was like an absolute absolute wreck as she's doing the dark water taunt, legitimately in fucking tears, dude. Absolute tears. She she couldn't hold it in, and we don't blame her, honestly. Not in the slightest. No, how could you? And then. At some point, you just got to let the tears flow. It made the match better, for sure. I mean, by the way, all tribute aside, this match was fucking great. This is another match to watch out just to see where the future of the AEW Women's Division is going to be. Because these all four of these women did fucking great. Even Burt Baker got so good now. Like, so good compared to what she was. We are witnessing the future, like, in this match, despite the circumstances. I, I just want to point that out. Um, I mean, cons- conspiracy girl? Oh, yeah, okay. Well, here's the thing with that uh, whole conspiracy thing. Britt Baker, um, the reason why she... First off, it was it's always been her gimmick anyway. Yeah. The whole thing is rigged. Uh, Anna J and Ty Conti, this is what she said, by the way, it was rigged. You could say that this whole thing is a big rig and it was a little wink and nod to Brody Lee's first ever independent wrestling name big rig um oh yeah talk about talk about doing your homework mhm and Man, uh I thought she was then, just saying that just you know for and then and then Thunder Still Rosa came and then Thunder Rosa came out of nowhere before we could let that sink in for a second and then just started beating her ass because Thunder Rosa, even though she loves Brody, don't give a shit. Fuck Brooke Baker. That's what she says. I don't like you. Yeah. I don't. I don't forget, motherfucker. He's a bitch. Um, they promoted New Year. Bitch. They promoted New Year's Smash. By the way, holy shit, wrestling is gonna be busy this week. By the way, uh, Wrestle Kingdom, uh, New Year's Dash, New Year's Smash on AEW side, Impact as well. It's gonna be. Uh, it's like six load up, wrestling load up, shows. Load, load up the first full week of the year, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. No question. I'm looking forward, I will say. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, and, and by the way, you mentioned Wrestle Kingdom. For those who don't already know, uh, we're, uh, let me just preface this by saying we're obviously recording this on New Year's Day. So uh, by the time you see this, this and that may no longer be mine. But I will be putting these up for grabs come Wrestle Kingdom. Oh, yeah! I get to reclaim my throne! You get to try to reclaim your throne. Yeah. Only time will tell whether or not um, it actually happens. We're don't, gonna, put your uh, cart before, don't put your cart... Don't try. Don't, only do. Don't put your cart before the horse, gesture. This was um, another match, by the oh. way. We got we got one more match and then the main event, the actual main event of the show, because it wasn't the match, but um, 
we had the Brody Lee Jr. Dream Match. It was another six-man tag with his favorite wrestlers. Preston Vance, otherwise known as Ten. Cody Rhodes and Orange Cassidy versus Team Taz. Brian Cage, Will Hobbs, and Ricky Starks. Um, love how they furthered the storyline in the midst of all this, by the way. I thought it was a really nice touch, but um, we'll get to that later. Um, Hook was out with Team Taz as well. Taz's son, Hook, uh, a.k.a. Tyler, I forget, I can never pronounce Tyler that. Sin uh, Tyler Sinertia. Yeah, Sinertia, thank you. Um, he was out there. Um, and I'll get to him in a minute because there's a un, here's a other unsung moment later. But um, it was building towards another hot tag for Preston Vance, who by the way looked fucking phenomenal. They gotta use this guy more often, by the way. They got yeah. to. He looked so good here, and I can see why uh, Brody Lee Jr. loves this guy and why they need to use him more. Um, and they just did great. Um. They had so many. They had a set out power bomb spot for Preston Vance. They let him get uh, his sp trademark spine buster after he hits his spine buster, which, by the way, apparently Brody Lee passed down to him because that was his old finisher. He was in tears after he hit it, and then he got the pin and the win for Brody Lee Jr.'s team. And um, and what can you say of that about that for, like, a fan requested match? That just from, lost his father, by the like way. Like a wrestler's family. Yeah. Yeah, they just lost like his what dad. What other? Yeah, like what other injury, industry uh, does none, that? None, none. And that's what's so beautiful. This is the first about. time I've ever seen. I've never seen this. Like this a, is why a this, dream match. Dude, this is why this tribute show was so good because while it was definitely a tribute show, they also furthered angles too. Which is exactly, by the way, what Brody Lee would have wanted. And they did it in such a tasteful way as opposed to just using his death for heat. For a cheap pop. Yeah. Or a cheap heat. And then uh, Team Taz is doing a beatdown scene. And here's the other unsung moment that I don't think anybody caught because of all the emotions going through everybody said. Now, a lot of this is pure speculation, what I'm about to say, but I... I'm a son of a really great man. Okay. So, I'm, I'm thinking in the perspective of Hook here. Tyler gets in the ring... And I don't think this part was planned. I think I think they talked about this late, earlier in the bag before they went out. And Hook hits his first ever Tazplex right in front of his father. Remember what everybody's been saying? Hold on to your loved ones close because you never know when they may go away. I think that's what happened here. I don't think I saw that. Yeah, he everything had a, was he going had, on. Like everyone he, he was scrambling had, in the ring. It's such an unsung moment. It was like it was obviously because it was all about Huber, but I it, it's like I felt where I felt where Tyler was coming from. Like he did a Tazplex for his dad, right in front of him. By the way, you saw the whole thing. His first ever wrestling maneuver in a wrestling ring, and by the way, he hit it so good. You gotta watch this back. He's he, he's. I'm gonna tell you right now, ten years time. Brody Jr. And Ty um, and Tyler Sinertia. Ty, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Brody Lee Jr. Hook. I would I would call him Tyler Red Hook. By the way, that's just me. Um, All right, because he's from the Red Hook section of Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, that that's uh, yeah that's the whole thing. Um, Dominic Mysterio, I know he's going to show up there at some point. Brian Pillman Jr. And the Vaughn Erics, like... Well, Brian Pillman Jr. is already in it. But right, but I'm talking about, like, a Davy card, I really... Who, who do you really want? David. Yeah, David. David, David Benoit. Benoit as well. The wild card? Hell yeah. 
bring David, in David. David Benoit, Brody Lee Jr., um, Tyler Redhook, Dominic Mysterio, or Prince Mysterio. Mark Pullman Jr. And, and, yeah. uh, and, and uh, Marshall and Ross Von Erich. Yeah, Marshall and Ross Von Erich, Davey Boy Smith Jr., yeah. Jacob and Sifa Fatu. Like, the, 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 the generation of wrestling is alive and well, trust me. And, and it's going to live on via these guys. This yes. is the future in 10 years, 100%. It's absolutely the future in 10 years. And hopefully we got to look into the conclusion of a long-running storyline arc with the Dark Oh, 100%. Thankfully, uh, with, well, uh, thanks to Clean Sweep here tonight. Because hang on, Nico's like, yeah, I have to get this out. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. When Brody Lee joined the Dark Order, there were a bunch of... Misorgan, uh, unorganized, out for themselves, directionless force that could never really figure out how to pick it up, how to put it together, mm-hmm. and get some results. Brody Lee came in, swept the whole group under his thrall, mm-hmm. sacrificed his own life. And I don't know whether or not it was that that got the message across, but look at where the Dark Order is now, thanks yeah. to John Cooper. A beloved. Clean, beloved. A clean, and not just beloved, they could never pick up wins before he showed up. A clean sweep yeah. for the Dark Order. You know what this it was night. like? Um, it was like the, it, it's reminiscent of when... Uh, the Dark Order has finally gotten it together. It was reminiscent of when that uh, football team lost uh, lost their brother. Uh, one of the one of the football players lost their brother, and and that team went on to win like five games in a row and make the playoffs. Like that, it was kind of like that. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, they're doing a beatdown, Team Taz. And then if if things couldn't get any more like emotional. Emotional. Uh, Darby's music hits, and he's just sitting near the ramp, and he's got Brody written in his face paint. And then Sting's coming out, almost like he's mourning in a way too, like he's coming out, and him and Darby look so good together, by the way. And they chase Taz off, Team Taz off again, and all five of them are staring down Team Taz. What a visual, dude. What a visual. And that probably made that kid's day, too. I, I wish they... I think they did pan to the kid. And then... As that wrapped up and they went to commercial, when they came back, Cody's in the ring. Literally in tears. Another emotional moment where he said... You can never judge a man for doing something for somebody else that could do him no good. John came in here, and that was the theme of the night. Um, He came in here to elevate everybody. But even more importantly than that, he came to help not only us, but he came here to help his wife and kids and because of that John Huber is a beautiful man and he leaves behind a beautiful legacy and then he introduces negative one Tony Khan's leading him out with them uh, so is uh, why am I for blanking on her name uh, Amanda right Amanda Huber yeah. coming out uh just trying to keep it together. Preston Vance. And Pres- yeah. Preston Vance is comforting her as they're all chilling. As best he can. And then Brody Jr. retires the boots while Cody puts the handkerchief over the boots. Tony Khan has and, the and, TNT and- title. The OG TNT title that originally wasn't finished, and they had since finished. No, that 
yeah, this was the official, yeah, the the first iteration, yeah. Um, he told them, "Your father was an amazing human being, and while these boots are retired, so is this. But it goes to you because you're the TNT champ for life." And he retired that design of the belt and gave it to the kid. And then mom just lost it. Because I don't think she was expecting that. I don't think any of us were expecting it. And then... Everyone were not expecting that. And then he straight up told him... Thank you all for coming out here tonight. I think we can only end this the best way we possibly can. Here's a tribute to Mr. Brody Lee, to John Huber. And what aired was the most heart-wrenching and most beautiful AEW package, a a wrestling tribute package period that I've ever seen using, of all things, Old 55. Which he has bought the rights to, by the way, in perpetuity. So it will stay that way forever. And it ends with that graphic that you're seeing on the screen right now. Yep. And there was a thing, wow. there was a thing that happened after the show. They had one right. more big round of applause. Negative one and Brody Lee Jr. are in the ring. He gives... Uh, he puts down the TNT title, and there's hugs all around. Tony Khan is sobbing like his life depends on it. Dude. And it's, it's just an amazing moment. It was. Now, there was actually another tribute that happened before um, before Tony Khan gave Negative One the belt. It's uh, Chris Jericho explaining right. that... When he and Brody were on the road, when they went to, uh, it was Mecca, or it was like yeah, they went to Jeddah, the they went to Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, I think. Yeah, the Jeddah, first Jeddah. Show. They went to Jeddah. Jericho looks up at the ceiling and he notices like a sticker that was bothering him. And when Brody he thought it was a bug and it was annoying him. Room, it was annoying him, and he asked him, "What's this thing on the ceiling?" It's like that's an arrow pointing to Mecca. And Jericho said he didn't know that. The thing about Brody is, yeah, he knew, but he's also a type of man that respects cultures anywhere he goes. He's a very respectable man who understands traditions. And also intelligent. Very intelligent. You know, I've, I've, um, that's not to say that their initial thought wasn't money. I still stand by that. But I think I've given a lot of WWE a lot of flack for their Saudi Arabia partnership but I think that little story with uh, with Huber kind of opened my eyes a bit because it, it dawned on me you know those kids didn't choose to grow up where they grew up you know they, and they want to try to change if bringing them and maybe a lot of their mindset is if bringing a wrestling show to a country that couldn't kill us will cheer them up, then so be it. I guarantee you John Hubert thought that. Guarantee it. So yeah. maybe maybe This uh, was his life. This was his life. life and yeah. It was his livelihood. His his livelihood was entertaining. Yep. Everyone he cared about, and that includes us fans. But yep. absolutely and he, and most importantly his family. And he died as he lived, putting other people above himself. It was such a beautiful tribute, dude. Same One of the best. Was. You gotta That's, watch. You gotta and, watch it when you get him in a case. I'm telling you, it's one of those. Yeah, is it? Uh, it is, is it? Uh, is it on? Uh, is it on BR Live? I think it should be. Uh, then that's probably yeah. how I'll end up checking it out. Bro, it's. Such a wonderful tribute, dude. Like I, it's, 
It's an incredible tribute. And let it not be said that the Indie Force is above paying tributes of our own. So if you'll give me just a second here to get things set up. I may be... Uh, I may be the horror prince of the Indie Force. But let it not be said that it is not possible to earn my respect. John Huber, in life, in work, and in death, has absolutely done that by leaps and bounds. So, in honor of the man he was in and out of the ring, on this night, I set aside my crown and my title. And the horror prince of the Indie Force willfully and proudly bows to the exalted one. Awesome. Awesome. Beautiful. Amazing. Um, um, Rest in I, peace, John Huber. Save a sermon for us in the afterlife. He has been exalted for real. As sad as that is, but it's also kind of beautiful in a weird way. Um, I'm also going to do my own tribute. Um, I'm going to try like hell to, to find a way to do this. So, um, this beard, I'm going to grow out as long as John Huber's was. And by the time it gets to the length, right up until his passing... I'm going to shave this and most of my hair off and donate it, if I can, to the American Lung Association as well. Um, it ain't much, but um, that's at least something. And all uh, it takes is something. Yeah. So, before we end this show... Um, does anybody want to give thoughts to Brody Lee or they have uh, like favorite memories, moments, or have we pretty much covered everything? I've pretty I much said all I need to say. Go on. So, I heard that Tony Khan did hire negative one. Yeah, which Brady. is why we've been saying the 10 year thing, by the way. Because he's yeah. got ten, uh, he's got ten more years, and he'll be of age to be a wrestler. He is signed to a I full-time contract, know. dude. Unbelievable. And he's eight years old. I know that he'll do his father proud in the most respectful and beautiful way. And whether or not he's going to go down the wrestling path. Yeah, agreed. It just shows not every other wrestling company does this. For oh. a wrestler who's passed, like I'm trying to view this on like other industries that kind of bring in family into wrestling. Now it is a good idea to you know follow the dreams of being a wrestler, but I feel like this one takes it a step where it's so emotionally driven that. Yeah, such a young age, too. Such a young, young age. This kid, Brody Lee Jr., it's his destiny to come yeah, 100%. and work at AEW. In any capacity. His father's legacy of bringing together the Dark Order as the new Exalted One. For any other wrestler that bring in their kids into wrestling, like, for instance... Dominic Mysterio. At first, I didn't understand what was the point. And it was mainly just for matches with Lesnar, but that was pretty much it. And the matches following that was just hard to watch. Right. It was unnecessary. Hell, think, hell, hell, think back to Vern and Greg Gagne. Mm. Dude, it, exactly. It was just unnecessary. It was just uncomfortable to watch. But this... This actually really gives me hope for Dude, Brody Lee Jr. Not only for Brody Lee I have. Let's not even say just Brody Lee Jr. if we're going to talk about like future generation stars. You know, the people I mentioned. 
Marshall and Ross, uh, Brian Pillman Jr. with Griff Garrison, um, Hook, Red Hook, like, it, it, like all it, these guys are going to be in the future, dude. And I can't wait. Like I never seen any other wrestling industry that does this, or the children of a wrestler who's well respected after his past. Dude, you know, you know, Tony it. Khan has booking plans already for him if he decides to go about it too. Like, you know he's Agreed. already written in his pad. And by and the way... this tribute... Mm, go ahead. This tribute will definitely take an inspiration for wrestlers like David Benoit, the yeah. sons of the Vaughn A 100%. Brian Hunter Jr. It will yeah. flood into the company because... Ja ja don't forget Jack Perry, too. Jungle yep, Boy. Yep. Then, too, something I've watched... In AEW, that finally clicked. It's not a company. All Elite Wrestling is a community. Yeah. Amen. And Amen. A genuine it's, community it's, it's where people a, a can company? love and support each other. Unlike it's a company. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's you a know company. what? It's a you community. Can't... Yeah. It's a it's a company. It's a community, and above all else. It is a family. And that's another thing. Like, Not to say that WWE doesn't have the pockets of those. You've got to understand that even when we did tributes, you never felt like it was okay. Uh, like months after the fact. Right? You're still grieving. Like so much. Like nothing was settled or resolved. And I'm not saying that they won't still be grieving. We'll all probably still be grieving in some way. And I'm sure the Huber family more than anybody else, but... Absolutely. You know, everybody was grieving so hard when the Eddie stuff happened and the Benoit stuff, and even prior to that, the Owen stuff. And, like, no one really properly recovered. I mean, Brett still suffers to this day because of it. Right? Fucking Our Martha, Martha Hart to too day. suffers to this day. Martha, even Benoit suffers. Yeah, like so many people. Sons of like, the Von Eric. They, they, they don't. Homes. They don't get their just due, and I, I'm not saying that's at the fault of WWE. I'm I'm saying that's a fault of the business because it took John Huber to kind of bring us to the point of what's really important. Um, like, every wrestling promoter kind of treated death like this because it was always business as usual. I mean, every industry does it. It's not even just in wrestling. It's a, Race, racing does this. Racing does it. Everybody does this. Dude, when Dale Jr. passed, they literally did a whole documentary about Dale uh, uh, or or when Dale Earnhardt Sr. passed, and, like, how they were just trying to just gut it through. They couldn't just take a day to remember him. It took, like, I think the, the Daytona 5 or the Pepsi 400 that Dale Jr. won to, to finally celebrate and let the emotion come out. And you just see all of DEI just surrounding him and Waltrip and Steve Park, right? Both every, wall trips, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, every every single dude, ever all of DEI, every single member of DEI from all three crew pits came out and celebrated with them. I think they got one, two, and three that day in Daytona. But um, it took that. And what was it, it took again? A the long 01? time. It was it was a Pepsi what was it again? The, the 01 Pepsi 400. I believe so. Yeah. And it was just like. That's a long time to finally be able to grieve properly. But that's the industry. That That's business as a whole. This is the first time in my life that I've ever seen such human compassion from any business owner. And I have to give props to Tony Khan. Um... Do not get me wrong, he's definitely made his mistakes. Um, but he's human. 
We all are. We all are, and if tonight, if this night didn't show that, I don't, I don't know what does. Fuck whatever everybody else calls him, Money Mark, whatever. Which, even if he is or isn't, that's up for interpretation. He's a he's a human soul, and a kind one at that. And no matter how you feel about this guy, you have to give the proper respects to Tony Khan, so I don't even care. <laughs> Fucking hats off to you, dude. Dead ass. This is so... You hit you hit the nail out of the head with this one. Um, even though it's yeah. never been... It, it, and I agree, by the way, it never has been about rating, but you deserved every single one of those 977,000 viewers that week, dude. You, you earned that. You didn't have to do that. And you you literally could have just gone ahead with New Year's Bash and just business as usual and wait until later. You did it as practically as soon as it happened. And, and they did do it as soon as it happened because All Elite Wrestling is an example of community. Of community over business as how every wrestling industry should be. Mm-hmm. All Elite Wrestling is a perfect example of community over business. That's not yeah. to say you should build, put business as a community. high priority, by the way. Yes. No, absolutely. But this is a business prop this is a business philosophy that I've been trying to put in I've been trying to pass on to retail for years. Build the community on things that truly matter first. That will drive your if profits I, and make you all the money in the world. Legitimately, if I ever run a business, if, say if this becomes a business one day, FTW, like this is this is the video, this is the show I'm showing in its entirety. This show, regardless of how we got here, will stand the test of time for for years. I think this will live on past wrestling. That's how good this was. This is how humane this was, how beautiful it was, how emotional it was. Like, this was one of the greatest shows I've seen in my life and definitely the best wrestling tribute show I've ever seen. It and that covers a lot of ground. That covers a lot. And, by the way, the tributes don't end. Um, if you look on... Uh, YouTube and search up Brody Lee testimonials or something like that, or um, Brody Lee stories. Dude, there's 657 co workers, wrestlers, friends, family members, fans, fans that like loved him and just talked about how awesome of a guy he was. Twitter is flooded with memories by fans and, uh, co-workers alike about the story of Brody Lee. I saw one kid uh, graduated college and, and he was in line to get an autograph from Luke Harper and he just found out like right before he's about to meet Brody Lee that he graduated college. He was so ecstatic by the time he got there and Luke Harper kind of looks at him and he's just like what's, what's, what's up man? You look super excited. And he straight up told him, dude, I just graduated college. I'm getting a bachelor's degree. And he looked at him straight in the face and said, dude, I'm so fucking proud of you. And gave him a hug. This is John Huber, dude. That is John Huber. That is the kind of man we had we had on our hands. And that is the loss we have been dealt in the last, in the dying throes of 2020. I hate 2020, man. So glad it's over. We all do. Dude, I'm... I couldn't believe that, man. Like, there's so many people that, like, harm people on purpose, and the kindest soul dies at 41 years old, man. At the prime of his fucking career. At the prime of his life. At the... On the push of his life. Dude. At the the start of... His career in AEW. It's such a shame, dude. But we can only mourn for so long. I don't think. I think now by this point is like Brody Lee is probably like 
Stop crying, little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> we love you, Brody, and uh, thank you for all the good memories. Um, before we end this podcast, first off, um, I'm not going to do our subscribe stick. If you want to, great. It, it, like, yeah, whatever. but it, it just feels like it's in poor taste. Um, I will say uh, thank you to DR6, uh, Dashing RKO619, um, who I've been working with on and off for like the last three years, even if he didn't know about it. I always loved his content. Um, I asked him if I could use that tribute video at the beginning of this podcast, and he said go for it. So um, definitely check him out in the description. If anybody deserves a subscribe, it's, it's that guy. That was such a wonderful tribute video. Uh, it's probably the uh, second best tribute video I've seen. And the other two were from AEW, so... Good, good on you, man. That was that was a really good one. So, with that being said, it's the end of the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what that means. Rest in peace, John Huber. You know, James, you want to grow your hair out in honor of Brody Lee. Casey, you're bowing to the exalted one. Me. I'm thinking of doing it. Now, this has been a while, but Sorry. this has been a while. This is a thing in the works. I, I was thinking about it. After this tribute, I'm actually considering to join. Oh, Dark my Dark. God. Oh, the site. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Go you on. know what? Let's all, let's all do it. Let's all do it. Not Obviously, you will get our... Whoever is running that account now, I assume it's not uh, John. You'll get our. Uh, get, uh, you'll get our uh, application. Don't worry. Um, but while we do that off air, just know we have officially joined the Dark Order. Join the Dark Order.